how my life is trying to let it go from around the way but we have culture conversation and community in today's video i'm coming to you all with some quick commentary i don't want to call it a review of this whole erica minna and carlos king's interview now i do want to say like Car carlos you are really doing a really good job with your production the sound is still a little wonky and i'm not saying that like me being a sound buff because girl listen i set up this iphone with the quickness but i am a consumer and i know when i can hear clearly hello <laughs> before we hop into the things of the things make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you don't know i'm on a mission and a goal to hit 10k by the end of the day and i would love for you to join um the youtube family period and in the words of carlos king hit the notification bell <laughs> so when i saw that carlos king was going to be interviewing erica mena i knew that he was going to alley you her an opportunity to kind of backpedal out of those um slurs that she had been seeing and then doubling down on and i immediately rolled my eyes girl I'm gonna be so honest with y'all. I was like, oh, here we go. Because we all know that Carlos Kings is a was a producer over at um Love and Hip Hop, and that's his good girlfriend at the end of the day. And um people who have a celebrity status, they protect each other. Kind of like, you know, the boys in blue. Like, yeah, you can be a little bit wrong, but you're still my sister. We're in like a fraternity. And I really kind of hope that in this next part two that we see Carlos King kind of hold her feet to the fire a little bit. We see that he will ask those tough questions, but will it be enough to um, do what it needs to do for the people who watch and follow um, Carlos King? Now, let's just hop into it. He, he is big on, I just want people to see what, um, what the person is, the personality behind a celebrity is like, that's his motto, that's his go-to. Which I can appreciate, you know, like we are always, you know, looking at things, lifestyle of the written famous and we want to know, you know, who's who and what's what. Although Erica Mena is not one of those celebrities um, that you kind of want to know everything about, but you, you're interested. There's a certain level of interest in y'all, be so for real. Erica was born in prison, foster care, you know, she... Um, had to deal with a lot she said that her anger really stems from the fact that she was in foster care and then although she did get visits from her mother that it was so painful to watch her go and me being a person who um have worked in a foster home have worked in group homes understand and know exactly um what that what that was like from a different lens obviously i wasn't in foster care thankfully but um my heart goes out to any adult who was a child in the system because it sucks and um, know that I always hold space for people who have gone through that because, you know, even as a young adult, I see I saw how hard it was for those children when those parents did come and leave. So, um, you know, they, then we had a little a small blurb into how she got started in the industry. And she was just like, you know, I was just a little girl from the Bronx and I seen J-Lo and I was just like, oh, that's what I want to do. And, you know, she started dancing and she was, you know, the only little Spanish girl that would go to the dance hall competitions and win money. And, you know, when her mom came home from prison, she got a dad who was a counselor, which sounds like it was inappropriate. We can romanticize things all we want to. It was an inappropriate relationship. I would like to know if they were still together, but um, long story short. Um, you know, she started to become the who's who in the New York scene by just going and applying herself, which I love a good girl who's going to get up and get herself together and just try. And it sounds like Erica Mena just tried, you know, she didn't have no, no real connection. She didn't have somebody sitting around waiting to give her an opportunity, um, which I'm not opposed to nepotism because you best believe if I have an opportunity to, to get something, <laughs> hey sis, hey girl, hey aunt. But when you are on the outside of it, it sucks. But, you know, so I am I would consider myself an underdog, too. I love that she was able to manifest those situations for herself. Um, she then goes into um, meeting up with somebody because at some point she became like a video vixen. This is when video vixens were it. Right now, I can put out a song today, have a video tomorrow, wouldn't even need a video vixen. It would still go viral. Um back in the early 2000s if you're over here you're like my kind of girl anyway we're about the same age and you know Buffy the Body um Erica Mena um that other girl I can't think of her name she used to be in that um video uh, with David Banner come girl I'm trying to make your body wet anyway 
<laughs> Maybe I'll put a picture on y'all. Know who I'm talking about? Like it was real, real baddies. Another girl who was a bad baddie from that era. Um, she was Ethiopian looking. I think her name was something Monroe. Girl, anyway, Erica was outside during the peak of being outside in the video vixen world. Okay. And, um, you know, she met this man, she got pregnant. This is, you know, she talked about how she got, you know, linked in with the Kardashians because her man was good friends with Scott and plugged her in and, you know, naturally it was cool. She got pregnant with her son and she became emotional. And, you know, she was like, I was trying to hide it. I was not okay with being pregnant. This was during the time when like, um, it wasn't okay to be pregnant. And this is why it's so important to have these kind of conversations around people like Krishan, around people like Holly, who are now in, in Sexy Red and Cardi B, and, who, and all of these other women who are now pregnant and celebrated, still able to make money, still able to make um, a significant amount of impact on popular culture. Whereas before, you know, you were pregnant, it was a death sentence, you know? And I and still today, pregnancy is treated like a disability, a handicap, <laughs> Um, in the medical system it's not like oh yeah well she's pregnant congratulations it's looked at and treated like a medical ailment and condition so she was able to persevere during those times where it sounded like she was at the peak of her it girlness and was still pregnant i can see how she is very emotional around the conversations that she had about her child she kind of goes into that which i won't mention because girl at the end of the day i'm a mother bitch i'm a mother y'all already know how i'm coming Basically, um, the blacks were saying that her child wasn't loved, but what she was saying was that she just had it to provide. She was a young mom, and when she broke up with the father, she had to provide, and she thought that that would be enough. And girl, I understand that today. I'm conflicted on a day to day. <laughs> you know, I don't know if y'all paid attention or not, but I'm no longer a stay at home mom. I am working a full time job, and I am a mother. And every day I'm looking at my kids like, damn. <laughs> You know, but mommy wants so much more for you and you, you go through that balance and it, it's difficult to maintain. She says she got the opportunity on Love and Hip Hop and was able to retire her mom, which she refers back to her mom. Like, you know, she was just this free, fun, loving girl in Brooklyn. You know, we were all one and I wanted to be J-Lo and, you know, we were Caribbean and this is what we did. And all of the people pitched in to raise our children that was very on par for us and we lived in a house so full of people and everybody was welcome and this is her way of setting the stage to say like oh I can say the n-word and I don't mean it in an offensive way or I can call you a monkey and not mean it in a racist way which Erica no girl wrong answer wrong road wrong road okay she goes on to say that she was so obsessed with J-Lo. She was looking for her Benny Medina and she would do all of these things in the same vein as J-Lo um, because that's who she aspired to be like. And I understand representation means a lot. J-Lo is aspirational for a lot of people, dare I say, not even in the Latina community, right? Um, but she goes on to say like how Evan Lozada became the hottest thing on Basketball Wives and she saw Evan Lozada and said, ah, this is what I can do. This is really within my realm. I can do this. And Mona wanted and needed an Evelyn Lozada for her show. Now, anytime somebody thinks of um, Evelyn Lozada, whether you love her or hate her, you know, she was kind of that girl on Love um, Love Basketball or what's it called? Basketball? Bas what is it called? Not Love Basketball, girl. Basketball Wives. Mm. She was that girl, that like, spicy Latina girl on, you know, Basketball Wives. And Carlos says, but wait, 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 what about Emily? And she's like, oh no, Emily was just royal and classy in this whole different way. She specifically um, related to Evelyn because of her spiciness. She was from Brooklyn, I was from Brooklyn. You know, she was, you know, one of the girls. She was a round the way girl. And again, this is the language that they use in order to align themselves, right? and the culture and the wave and all of the aesthetics, right? Because I'm from around the way. But the moment that we're side by side and neck by neck with a black woman, somehow I'm elevated and you're not. It's much, it's no difference than having, um, you know, you are a dark skinned woman and you have a light skinned friend in the moment, like, oh, we're all black. And in the moment you're in front of some men, now it's, well, <laughs> you know, I'm red mole. You know, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm half Puerto Rican. I'm mixed with Cherokee. 
those those um the things that set you apart is people's attempt to create the barrier for blackness, but also too lets you know like I'm not one of them. I'm above. I'm am um, desirable. I'm fetishized over because of this part Cherokee or because of this Latin culture or because of this spicy Latina role that I'm playing. So. Carlos, Carlos just sitting back. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hit the notification bell. Hey y'all. What's up, Raindrops? We're about to drop the merch. Okay. And y'all know how he's doing. I love Carlos. I like Carlos a lot. Carlos is aspirational for me in a lot of different ways. So I'm not trying to sit up here and play, but I, I just see the setup. I see the setup. I'm from around the way. I'm from New York. We're all one. It's a melting pot. But if you are aligning yourself with the likes of Evelyn and Lozado, oh Josico wanted me, right? then we already know what, we, what she's given. She's of the people, but not for the people. Up until was involved with another black woman. And she's gone on to double down on her statements and she can say, oh, I had this rough life. Girl, we all had a rough. We all got childhood trauma. We all got to heal from it. That does not make it right. And I'm so hopeful that he is going to hold her feet to the fire. And a little bit like, it, it, something about it seems disingenuine. And a little bit of it doesn't, you know, she, Erica's a Scorpio. I have a good, good vibes about Scorpios. I just can't help myself, girl. My birthday's on Saturday. Um, and I, I, I understand. I've been in a relationship with um, people who are Latinx or, or real afro Latinos. Let me just say this, and I understand. Um, I'm not like, is, this is something that is touchable and attainable for me in a real way. So I know what it gives. You feel what I'm saying? The ones that's with it and the ones that's not. Um, I'm curious to know what y'all all thought about this. Is it is it going over well? Are you here for it? Did you feel like she was genuine? Are you interested? Um, let me know. Drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Right now, I'm kind of like, mm, girl, we see the setup. And Carlos, you better not give her the Ali oop to say, of course I'm not racist. I have my children. Because what that means is, you know, I'm, I can only be racist if I don't have black children and I don't take black date. It doesn't matter how many like peens you set on, how many like children you reproduce. When you're in a relationship or in proximity to someone who's black and you, the first thing you try to do is weaponize that blackness, baby. Maybe you're not a racist, but you're surely a bigot. That's all I got for y'all. Let me know what y'all think. Drop down in the comments. As always, I'm sending you much love and much light. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.